Hi there, this is Neil, and I'm going to be talking to you today about webinars. Now, webinars are a bit like seminars, but they're done online, and the advantage of that, obviously, is that people that attend your webinars doesn't, don't have to go out of the house to attend and be educated. They can just sit there at home and listen to you, and, and it's kind of like a PowerPoint presentation delivered over the internet through screen sharing type software like GoToWebinar or GoToMeeting, those sorts of things. There are quite a few of these sort of webinar systems. I would recommend GoToMeeting, I think, oh, sorry, GoToWebinar, which is organised by GoToMeeting, the, the same people who produced it. Uh, I think the company is called Citrix Online. And GoToWebinar is probably the one that I would recommend. It is slightly more expensive than others, but it's uh, it's the industry standard. Um, I did a blog on it fairly recently, I think in the last couple of days, all about the pros and cons of using uh, a webinar system that is industry standard. And essentially the pros far outweigh the cons. Any joint venture partners that you're going to be doing webinars with should know uh, GoToWebinar because it's industry standard. All of the people who attend are more likely to know GoToWebinar simply because it's industry standard. All of these sorts of things can lead to um, all the advantages that you'd normally expect. You can record it. Any kind of um, community support that you might need, forums, that sort of thing, they're going to be a lot stronger on a system that's industry standard. It's you know, it's it's just something that you need to uh, stick with, and again, unfortunately, they can charge a premium for it, but I think it's probably worth it. So that's kind of what webinars are. Um, it's a system whereby you can educate people, and potentially you can sell off the back of it. Now, I wouldn't just do it just to sell, because I think the the benefits of webinar. Um, far outweigh just a simple sales pitch. If you want to educate your market and then sell to them, I think that's a, a lot better way of doing it. But I, I was talking to someone on Tuesday about this, um, and you know we both kind of agreed that if you're doing a webinar, what what needs to happen is that the people who attend need to have value, even if they don't buy anything from you. After an hour and a half, maybe two hours webinar. Um, you don't want people to come away just going, oh god that was a waste of time, I didn't buy anything. Um, I would want them to come away from, from it if they hadn't bought anything and said, well you know what, that was really good content. And and also if you want to sell something, give stuff away first um, because it, it just makes it a lot more personal. Um, it, it means, it builds this reciprocity that people don't actually mind buying from you afterwards. So hopefully that kind of helps out on on what webinars are um i'm going to be talking to tomorrow i think i think it's going to be tomorrow about list building and how you're actually going to get people um to be interested in all of your stuff and ultimately it's all about giving stuff away of value and and producing content if you solve someone's problem then you can start to um monetize it people will pay you to solve their problems you know, if if your house is too messy and you don't have enough time, you pay a cleaner or a housekeeper to keep it tidy for you. It's it's exactly the same sort of principle, and it doesn't matter whether it's an online product, um, or some kind of service, or a physical object. Um, ultimately, it's all about solving problems. And uh, you know, it, even if you buy a book or a novel, the reason that you buy that book or the novel is because you want to be entertained, and and you're lacking entertainment otherwise. You know, if if you were going out on holiday to, I don't know, Disney World, an action-packed, some kind of action-packed holiday, you probably wouldn't take a book with you simply because you'd be having far too much time doing the activities, and that wouldn't be a problem. Um, so entertainment in that instance would not be a problem, and therefore buying a, a book like that while you're on that sort of holiday, it's not going to solve any problem, because the problem isn't there, because it's already being solved. So what you've got to do is to kind of work out what what sort of problems people have and then develop something that's going to solve it. So um, talk about the Disneyland holiday. People do buy stuff. People buy stuff all the time on those sorts of holidays. But they don't necessarily buy a book that's going to keep them entertained because there's loads of other stuff to do. They might buy other 
day trips um, to you know Bush Gardens or Orlando Resort or whatever that might be, uh, whatever that sort of um, package might look like. But it's it's still going to be of the same sort of ilk. It's you know a book probably won't compare to any kind of attractions that's available in um, in Orlando, for example. Um, un unless you're going to stay there for a very long time, or you know longer than the typical uh, sort of family or action action holiday. So I hope that analogy kind of makes sense. I th I think it makes sense, but. You know, um, write a little comment if you don't think it makes sense. Also, don't forget to thumb me, either yes or no. Um, I love to see how many people like my videos or, or otherwise, and whether they find them useful or not. Um, more direction from you guys would be great. Um, let people know about it as well if you do find it interesting. Pass it on on social media. Look me up on Facebook. My name is Neil Trigger. And look me up on Twitter, both at Neil Trigger and at Mantea as well, M-A-N-T-E-Y-A, -E where you can go um, to mantea.com and have a look at other stuff like this to help you with your own home-based business. So I hope you did find it useful, and tune in again tomorrow where I'm going to be talking about list building. Thanks very much for watching.